It was 50 years ago. Most of the Earth's population had been killed by aliens, reticulans. In the end, our ancestors were forced into a peace treaty with reticulans. They saved mankind from extinction, but the price was high. We had to leave the Earth, our home planet, forever. Some of us have stayed in the rebuilt starship, Laputa, in the Earth's orbit. The rest of us were moved to Mars. With the help of Reticulans, we built a base in one of the craters. We survived with hope that in the future, we will succeed in transforming Mars into our home. New Earth. Indeed, greetings and welcome to New Let's Play series, welcome to UFO Afterlight. Yeah, I'm going to keep that joke going for as long as I can. Right, the, I suppose you could say spin-off side sequel, since it's not really set after the events of UFO Aftershock, but rather during the events of UFO Aftershock, although you won't know that until you actually start playing the game. But this essentially takes place after the settlers have been put on Mars for 50 years. And, well, they have not really accomplished all that much. All things considered. But anyway, let's get the timer started so I don't forget that. Let's set up a new game. Now, uh, I'm running this game with an unofficial patch, I believe, and a widescreen mod, if I remember correctly. So, that's why you can see this in glorious 1080p. The game wasn't designed for all of that, really, so if there are glitches or stuff, that's probably why the game isn't the most stable, but it's playable, it's completable, let's put it that way. And it's a fairly interesting story, like I said before, um, of the entire UFO series, I like Aftershock the most because it's simply, uh, the gameplay is better. UFO Afterlight? has a similar gameplay but it's different in a way that I can't fully put my finger on why it, I don't like it quite as much but it is definitely a much more interesting setting compared to UFO Aftershock since I always felt there was really nothing you were doing to the world to you know, retake it from the aliens or from the cultists whereas in UFO Afterlight you're terraforming Mars, and you're actually terraforming Mars in a fairly competent manner. Now, granted, some of the terraforming is done with magical alien technology, but that doesn't change the fact that you're still doing it. And that is also being represented on the world. You're actually building stuff on the world that you can see. Which I find infinitely more interesting than looking at the globe and painting it in my color. But anyway, that's just enough of me going on about that. Um, I have been trying a little bit of the sound balancing beforehand, but I'm a little bit worried the voices uh, of the characters may still be a little bit too loud, but unfortunately there's also quite a lot of dialogue in this game. And uh, you'll probably want to hear that anyway. I mean, uh, most of it is subtitled to some degree, but you know, I couldn't do this game for you justice if I didn't showcase the excellent voice acting slash air sarcasm. <clears throat> but anyway, let's actually start a new game. Now, I will be playing on normal difficulty, simply for the fact that it will play fast enough. I've never, uh, I think I've tried hard beating that eventually, but didn't see the benefit of actually playing on hard. And I've never tried impossible because, well, I didn't want to try eating the sun. 
There's not much. Uh, I can go for a, a slightly more advanced setup, like make the tactical lane easier or harder, and the strategic game easier or harder. I don't feel like doing that, uh, making that any more different than it is right now. Let's just get started. We launch right into a tutorial mission. Explore the excavation site. It would have been nice if the game had actually explained why we are here. But apparently, as I understand it, they found some sort of alien um, constructions on Mars during one of their while they were setting up a base installation. So they started excavating it. Then something went wrong. Wonder what that could be. All right, so let's just start. I'll turn the uh, I'll, I'll turn the tutorial off. I mean, it is useful, but you know it has basically the same control, control, yeah, same control scheme as uh, UFO Aftershock, since it was not made all that long afterwards, I think. Now, the one thing you'll always do in this game is struggle with the camera because it is quite annoyingly um uh, free spirited i suppose it takes liberties where it really should not like that uh tilting of the camera view i did not do that i did not ask it to do that it did that itself but anyway here we have jean 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 lawrence is a soldier level two scientist level two has a little bit of experience has taken part in zero missions and killed zero enemies she has a fair variety of stats which we'll get back to later and has currently got an encumbrance of 38, which is mostly just the spacesuit. Because mm -hmm. we are on Mars and you are required to wear spacesuits. Space mm -hmm. Now, our objective here is to unpause the game and explore the excavation mm -hmm. site. What's next, sir? On my way! So let's start moving. Well, not that way. Gene. Waiting for orders. Move to the marked location. Relocating. We will do that. We will do that at maximum speed. Now, I tried to uh, set it up so I could uh, manually say the game fun. I want to go at this speed. Born wouldn't allow me to do that. So I'll have to pick the speed manually every time or click on it. Target identified. Alright, so here we see a slight problem. We have a mech. Now, fortunately, it is badly damaged. It basically has one health, I believe. And unfortunately, one of our fellow colonists has fallen. But he did drop his scientific laser. What's next, sir? So I'll let's do go my pick best. it up. And the mech isn't fully aware of us just yet. Waiting for orders. Let's equip the laser. Feel free to do the Doctor Evil finger quotes. As you say, laser. Now, kill the marked robot. You will do that. Engaging. So we'll shoot it. We have a 78% chance. Very good. Now, I don't mind the lasers making the pew noise. I just find that their beams are still so anemic. I mean, I get it. Laser, small beam, tight beam. Come on, give me something a little bit beefier than that. Uh, then again, this is a scientific laser. It's essentially just designed to cut rocks so they can do the excavation. They're not really meant as weapons. Mm. All right, so the What's next, sir? mech is, not, is uh, down, but not yet out. Targeting. Finish it off, please. One less. All right, move to the mark location. That's up there. On my way. Move up here. And here we see another problem. They brought windows with them. Never bring windows on your space missions. You can't bing your way to solve the problem. Waiting for orders. What's next, sir? Right, Relocating. Current excavation. All right, we see a friendly person, Diego Ramirez. Get close to him to make a group. That's on not my way. necessary usually in a game. Alright, so now we have Ready? Diego. Diego Ramirez, soldier level 4. He's only a soldier though. 
experience of 180 and is trained in heavy equipment. We don't have any heavy equipment right now, but it does mean that his uh, but he is able to carry a lot more stuff. Not that it really matters because he's still in the same spacesuit and you have only limited carry capacity. Relocating. Now, luckily, only one of the two speaks when you do this. Uh, I believe it's based on the who has the highest level, uh, who, on the matter who speaks. Although I don't know for certain. But anyway, let's head out. On my way. Orders, right? Yeah, uh, here no, we go. You go there. And I'll move at fast speed I'm because ready. in these suits they move quite slowly. I have visual. What's next? Ready? You start Kick shooting ass. this. He already, he already has his space laser scientific laser equipped. Engaging. I'm ready. And this crawling drone is not all that dangerous. Nailed him. All right. What to do now? Relocating. Time to evacuate to spaceship, which is basically our military transport. It also has a boot in which you can carry spare equipment if you need. Our archaeologists have been attacked by some mechanical drones on the excavation site at Sidonia. Seems like the ancient Martians have not left their dwellings unprotected. We will have to learn how to use weapons, and a few of us will have to become soldiers, so we can accompany the scientists. Fortunately, the Reticulans gave us their laser weapons. Unfortunately, the batteries for them are scarce as hell. Can we produce some more? I'm afraid we are not familiar with this technology. In that case, we can postpone our research of Mars terraformation and concentrate on laser technologies. On the other hand, it might be easier to browse the database brought from Earth and start production of projectile firearms. Some of the oldest settlers still keep their guns from mutant wars on Earth. They will surely lend them to our scientists for study. As soon as we get the blueprints, we'll create a production line and start weapons production. Yes. All right, that was a meeting. You'll have lots of those. Yes, you'll have a lot of those. Oof. This interface is yeah, a little bit iffy in design. I mean, it's completely functional, but just without pointing it out. And that you can bring up whatever you want. Currently, we're not researching anything, we're not producing anything, we're not being building anything at the base, and we have a couple of missions available. That we have also this. This is probably a little bit more useful uh, to keep an eye on, as this is shows us how much uh, of the raw materials we have, including water and energy, as well as the solar activity and the environmental hostility, which is sort of important for missions, since uh, currently our Spacesuits are rated for an environmental hostility of, uh, at a maximum of three. Which means if we go into a, an area which has, has higher hostility, our suits will uh, be unable to protect us and will take damage. And uh, the suits will break as well. Which is not good. And generally you want to avoid that, especially at this early stage in the game, since you are a little bit limited in your uh, capability, capability to field personnel. Because unlike Aftermath and Aftershock in Afterlight. This is all the people you have. Technically. New training programs are available. Thank you, Inge. And, um. Yeah, this is all the people you have. They are irreplaceable. Quite literally, because you can't bring people over from Earth, because, frankly, as far as we know, Earth is currently out of reach. Very much out of reach, actually. We don't even know if there's anyone still alive back there. Now, I say technically this is everyone you get. There are a couple of children that uh, will come of age during a mission, eventually. And there are also a couple of special triggers that allow for new people to show up if, for instance, their parents die. Because this is a very tight-knit group of people. Pretty much everyone here is family. New training programs are available. Thank you, Inge. Now, in particular, we have Jürgen Heinemann. Jürgen Heinemann died at the excavation site where the Martian drones awakened. His sacrifice saved the lives of the other colonists, and he will always be he always honored for his, for this. In his life, he never talked much, always preparing direct action. Rest in peace, Jürgen. 
character died during the struggle for humankind's survival. Yeah, he was a, uh, a scientist technician. So what he was doing, I don't know. He should not technically be able to carry a weapon. But Jorgen, I believe, yeah, was married to Ute. Oh yeah. Now, some of the voice acting in the of these characters is well, it ranges from either bad to downright annoying. Some people may have more than one class. Thank you, Inge. Case in point, Inge Heinemann. She is essentially uh, our voice for this has happened in this in this base. You can do this now, which gets a little bit annoying. But she has a way of speaking that is actually getting a little bit under my skin every time she says something. It's just a little bit too quiet. It's like she's not entirely certain of, of how she feels about things, and I think. That should not have been the choice of the person who speaks for the entire base. But that aside, <laughs> let's focus on the other characters here, because I, I, I have grown fond of many of these during previous playthroughs. In particular, Ute Heinemann, which I usually just find as the mother of the group. Now, unfortunately, I can't change the nickname of these people. I wish I could. Can't change the name, can't change the nickname. I don't know why that is. You may assign people to specific buildings. I know, Inge. Thank you. But... Uh, yeah. There's also drones we've got which we'll be able to build later or recover later. Because the Martian drones we can take uh, capture. And there's some aliens we might be able to recruit if we want to. But yeah, so we have Uta Heinemann. Harald Zamitjan, Diego Ramirez, we've seen, Samantha Swenson, Hikaru Yoshimori, uh, Tadeus Yoshimori, Jean Lawrence, Mark Wells, Pauline Lazal, Benat Haradze. By the way, I'm probably um, butchering some of these names. Oliver Swenson, Vera Schroten. Fernando Ramirez, Inga Heinemann, Agnieszka Yoshimori, Jacqueline Wells, Mary Osakwe, I think, Edgar Barker, Wilhelm Schroten, and Neil Barker. I'll leave it to you to figure out who belongs with who. All I really know is that Inga is the daughter of Ute. I believe that's in their profile. Yeah. Oh, granddaughter of Uth. Da daughter of Jürgen Heinemann, who died heroically when the Martian drones appeared for the first time. The death of her father deemed her introversion even further. And it significantly complicates her work as human resources manager. Well, then. I get you can't replace her because of that, but still. Come on, game. Alright, well, that's enough of me going over that, because we have things to do. In particular, in this world. Now, we currently control three provinces, and we have two missions available. Missions we can't currently get to because we don't have the fuel for the UFO. So we'll need to deal with that. Now, currently we can only build a fuel mine here in the Acid Plains. There's an excavation over here in Cydonia, which is... Well, technically that's where our base is, but... Essentially, that's I think that's the location where the, uh, the face... On Mars should be. If, if it's really a face, I, it's just a crater constellation that sort of looks like a face under the right angle. If you look at it, that aside, uh, it's also believe where I believe where the uh, where the sec where the uh, aliens in XCOM had their base. Mars is quite popular with aliens apparently. We also also own Zan which doesn't have anything in it. Well, well, anyway, let's go set it up. So, in order to set anything up, we need to build things. So I can uh, I can click on build and that will send out a truck to go and build something. I believe the technical bay does Some that. Some people may have more than one class. Shut up, Inge. Anyway, 
Uh, but I may not want to send everyone away, because if I do that now, basically everyone in these cars will move. And I might not want to do that. I actually kind of want to train people. Now, I have two training buildings, the University and the Polytechnics, both of which can uh, handle four people. And it is sort of important to figure out what kind of training you want. Now currently I can't do any military training because I don't have it researched. But I do have some science training I can research. Now, granted I don't know, uh, I don't remember off the top of my heart exactly where, which thing land goes where. But I do know certain things now but that I really should pick, put on people like, for instance, uh, the soldiers they want all one military training, but I also have dual class soldiers, like for instance these that are uh, soldier scientists. Soldier scientists I usually bring on the mission to do healing. So I want to train them in minor medicine and major medicine when it becomes available later. Which is why Hikaru Yoshimoto is kinda useless to me at the moment. He, I mean, he is trained in minor planetology, so he's able to speed up building of geosons. Which essentially is a, our means of claiming territory. You may assign people to specific buildings. Thank you, Inge. But right now, that's not really important. So I kind of want to train someone to do major, minor medicine. Now, Thaddeus is already trained in that, but I kind of want to get the rest in there as well. So you still start training, because I want to have someone available to take over, just in case. Uh, then we have the soldier technica technicals. They are sort of the specialists in a way that they they handle specialist devices like mining and preparing spacesuits while on missions, which is quite important. They will for them for them you'll probably want to start with the minor suit handling because it will allow them to repair spacesuits during combat, which is somewhat important. Alright, so I don't think anyone has that. You have the minor surveyor. The minor surveyor is also important in that you can use them to uh, build mining stations faster and dismantle landmines. How you handle landmines will become more important later. But you can at least have landmines in this game. Most of these are not trained in any specific way. Um, Alright, so you, I want to train in that, which is in the Polytechnics department. I probably want you to train as well. So slowly our technical bay is going empty. Then we come to the pure character classes. I'll make this a little bit longer episode. The pure character classes can never go on a mission. They will always be at the base or in one of the vehicles, which is somewhat important if you want to use them for something. Uh, at the moment, uh, so essentially, I don't want to ever train my uh, scient my full scientist as med uh, medicine men, medicine people, because I never bring them on missions, so it becomes less useful now. Of course, there is the slight point in that if you uh, train them in, the, in a particular discipline, they become better at studying that. But I don't think that's really important. I can just swap one of these guys into uh, that discipline, into the st study if it becomes necessary. Uh, but right now, I need to decide which goes where. Now, Inga, you... You could study minor earth technology. And I think you too, you as well. It is not necessary to do this right way, but since there's a certain amount of time required to do finish the studies, it's sort of important. It's sort of useful to do it now. Now here we have the full technicals. Again, these will never come on missions, but will go into technical bay if they need to. So I might want to give them minor civil engineering as a discipline for studying. The thing is, because uh, really you can only level them up 
so much during a game, you kind of want to specialize, specialize the units, you can't train them in everything. That's just impossible. And I only have two more rooms in the uh, Polytechnics. Hmm. So what do I want to do? Well, you can start training in this. And then we have the Science Technical people. They are, they are useful in many ways. They can both go on missions and usually do odd jobs around the base. Mm. Now, since they're always around the base, I suppose I'll train you in uh, minor civil engineering as well. And I think yeah, I think that's probably enough explanation of the basic functions of leveling up people and training them. We'll get to the more advanced topics of production and research in the next episode. But this will have to do for now. Thank you all for watching. Hope you'll enjoy the series.